Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're inside of Affinity Designer and this tutorial is about using the pen and the pencil tool for vector design and when it's best to use both of these tools. So before we begin, I've drew out this little scary looking tree in front of us that we're going to use as a template to trace around. And I'm going to include this in the description down below so you can download it and follow along with this tutorial if you want to. If you do decide to download the file, the size canvas for this project is a 4000 pixel by 4000 pixel. So once you've set up that size canvas and drop this image in, it will fit perfectly. Okay, so let's get started. So before we begin, you just need to bring in your image, whether it's this one that I've created or you've got your own sketch that you want to trace around. That's entirely up to you. But once we've got that in here, we need to come over to the layer section and we need to lock that. And what that is going to stop us doing is moving this around while we're drawing around it. And to lock that, you just select it and you've got this little padlock icon right there. Just check that on and off. And what we're going to do next is just drop this opacity to probably around 10%. So you can still see the image in the background, but it is literally there just to use as a template, something to draw around. So 10% looks pretty good to me. I can still see everything perfectly. So now we just got to begin drawing around this and we'll do that with starting off with a pen tool. If you're new to the pen tool or you're not fully confident on how to use this, I have made a separate video on using the pen tool. And I will link that in the top right hand corner now if you want to go and check that out first. Otherwise, let's just get started. So the best way for me to explain how to use a pen and pencil tool is the pen tool we're going to use to trace around this image and the pencil tool we're going to use to doing all the detail work because the pencil tool is basically it's a free hand tool, which means that we can draw around things a lot quicker than using the pen tool and it will give us some really good effects, which I will obviously show you as we go along. But for now, we'll just get started on this drawing. So once again, like I said, this video isn't going to teach you how to use a pen tool. I do have another video for that if you're unsure how to use that. So go ahead and check that out in the top right hand corner now. But for those of you who know how to use a pen tool, we're going to get started on this. So if any of you are new to drawing in Vector, it's going to be a little bit different to whether you use Procreate or Photoshop or any pixel based program. When drawing in vector is going to give us a separate layer for every single thing that we draw around. And this will become really important when it comes to putting this all together. So I'm going to try and explain that the best I can as I go along. But basically, we've got to look at things in sections. So this hand here, that's going to be one piece. And this arm underneath, that's going to be two pieces. This main body here, we're going to cut straight through these legs all the way around. And then that's going to be a third piece. This in the background here will be a fourth piece and etc. Fifth piece on this arm here, six and seven for the fingers and so on. But like I said, I'll explain it as we go on. But for now, we're just going to draw around this tree. So it's going to start off here. I'm going to try and be quick here. We're drawing this out so you guys aren't sat there watching for too long. And this doesn't need to be perfect at all. You can just generally go around this as quick as you like, make it as perfect as you want. So like I stated before, I'm not going to come around these here because this is going to be a separate piece. So instead, I'm actually going to come straight down here and I'm just going to join this back over here and keep on going round. OK, so there's our first piece that we've already drawn out. And if we pay attention to the layer section over on the right, we see we've got curve there. And it's always good to name these because before you know it, you're going to end up with a lot of these layers in here. So we could just start by calling this one main body. And now we're going to move on to the next piece. So at the moment, it's just got a stroke on this and it's got no fill. We're going to leave that for now, but eventually we're going to put a fill on this. And I'll explain that as we go along as to why we're going to do that. But for now, we'll carry on just drawing our next pieces. So on the next piece, I think I'm going to do this arm here. So we start off doing this as well. And you might notice at some points through this, it might try and snap into certain places that you might not want it to go. Like I want it to go a little bit higher here, but it keeps snapping there. If you're having this problem as well, if you hold down the option button on a Mac, it actually removes that red snapping point. And we can actually put this anywhere we want. I'm not too sure what key that is on the PC as I don't use one, but that is the option key on the Mac. So if you hold that down and just tap anywhere, that eliminates that problem we just had with it trying to snap into place.
And it's just a case of just keep tracing around other things. Just double tap on the escape key to come off the shape that we're already on so we can start to create another one. And just make sure you're on that pen tool. And I'm now going to quickly just draw in all the rest of these pieces, but I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to watch it. Okay, I'm just going to stop at this point because in the moment we're actually going to copy and paste this one over here. But before we do that, I want to address this line inside here. And now we're going to overcome this because we want to be able to color this as well inside to give it a darker shade. So if we hit escape twice, just come off that shape that we're already on and just select that pen tool. And we're just going to draw this line in here. So we just start there and we do another one up here. And we just curve that like we normally would. From this point, I'm just going to start drawing roughly anywhere around here. It doesn't matter how neat this is. It's not important and just join that together. So now we've got this other shape here. So before we carry on, I'm just going to name this eye so we know what it is before we end up with too many layers. And this will be the inside eye. And what we want to do now is we want to just drag this inside eye into this eye underneath it. So then it will nest inside it and it will cover up all the rest of this by being masked by that eye there. And we're just going to drag that down. And you see we've got this big blue bar. If we just pull that over to the right and wait for that bar to shrink like that so it indents. Once it indents, just let it go. And then that will actually be inside of that eye. So if we just hit escape, you can now see that we can't see the rest of this that we just created. And it is actually nested inside of this one now. So if we were to color that, you can see it's literally just colors in the section that we wanted and not the rest of this outside of there. And I'm just going to undo that for now because I don't want to color it at this point. And now we could just generally cheat. We can make a copy of this, just Command C or Control C and Command V or Control V. And it's going to change that to the arrow tool up there, the move tool. I'm just going to swap it around on this flip horizontal up there. I'm just going to move it into place. And like I said before, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a sketch underneath something to give you kind of guidelines. But when you can copy and paste, it's going to speed up your process a little bit more. Okay, now we've got that. I'm going to focus on drawing out the rest of this. I'm going to select that pen tool again and keep on drawing around this image. Okay, so there's a lot of the line work done and I just want to stop at this point again and talk about this bit like we did down in the eye. We're going to want this to be drawn all the way around here so we can make it into a shape. So if we just generally start anywhere you want, start there. And we just draw around this like we did the other pieces. And once again, I'll just speed this bit up for you. And now we've got this piece as well. But like I said before, we're starting to get a fair few layers in here now. So it's always good to name these so you know where you are. So with this piece here, I just generally put in a circle and I converted that to curve. So I could just bend that around a little bit using the no tool. And that's for the fingers and stuff. We'll address that just in a moment. But I just want to quickly focus on this hand before we start making this look a little bit better. And this bit here, because it's such unique kind of curves to it getting the pen tool could take quite a bit of time going around this if you want to keep this kind of style that we've already got so this is where the pencil tool could come in handy so if we go and select that now on the left hand side so before we begin with the pencil tool i just want to talk about a couple of these features that we've got up here on the top menu bar so first of all we've got our stroke which is a color of the lines that we are drawing we've got the width which is how thick it's going to be and after that we've got the sculpt option here so we're going to talk about the sculpt section and what it does. So if we just turn this off for now as it is, we're just to start to draw any kind of line or pattern that you want to do. And we can see over here, we've got this new curve there, which is that line that we just drew. And if I just come off that a second, you can see it's gone invisible. I'm going to put that back on. So if I choose this again now and I start to draw from where I just finished with this little red box and I just carry on there, if you pay attention to the right hand side on the layers, that has actually just created another line that we don't want. So this is now is in two parts. So if I press escape, we've got that line that we just created and we've got our first line there. So what sculpt allows you to do is combine the lines together. 
So if we just delete that quickly, I'm just going to Command Z or Control Z to undo that. And this time around, we're going to turn this sculpt on. So once we check that, if we draw this line again or any line you want to do, and we can just let go of our mouse at this point, and we are free to just move around this canvas if you want to. And we've got our single line over here or curve that we just created. But if we decide that we want to carry this on now, we can just start by tapping on this red box again and just carry on drawing. And if we pay attention over to our right hand side layers again, you can see this is now one line. So I've come off that again, it's all invisible. And Sculpt allows you just to freely start and stop and just carry on. So we can just carry on again and it'll all just keep adding to the same line as long as you've got that Sculpt on. And if we turn it off, like I said before, we start drawing now, that is going to be its own separate one. As you can see by turning that on and off, whereas this other one with the Sculpt on, it just makes it one single line. And this tool is going to be a lifesaver when it comes to doing quite complex work. So I'm just going to command the control Z just to get rid of that so we can carry on with our next feature. So another feature we've got on here is called the stabilizer, which is another really important tool. And I'm going to demonstrate how this works now by drawing our hand. So I'm just going to command plus just to zoom in on this and we'll get closer to our hand so we can see around it. So the stabilizer, what this generally does is it kind of creates a little rope. So I'm going to turn that on. And you'll see if I just start to draw here, I've got this little pink rope that you can see there and I can just move that around. And with this rope, we can make that shorter or longer by simply just choosing this length section there. And you can make that longer or you can make it shorter. So just to demonstrate again, if I click back on here now, we've got a longer one than we just had. And what that generally allows you to do is really focus on getting around your corners and stuff. And I'll demonstrate that in just a moment. I'm just going to first change that length back to something a bit smaller. Around 30, I think is fine. And we're just going to start here. So as we start to draw with this, keeping in mind at the moment we're on the pencil tool and not the pen tool. And quickly before we start, we want to turn that sculpt on if you haven't already got that turned on. So we're going to start by just tapping on here and we're going to start dragging this now to start drawing. But if you pay attention to our little red line or rope that we've got going on there, if you just pull away and the idea of this is just to focus on the rope itself to get your general curve. And you can generally see you can stop and you can just move this around just like that without disturbing the rest of this. And the longer this is, the more you can move it around. But this comes really useful when you come to going around corners, which if we just come up here now, and we just start to turn it so we get to this point so I can just stop here and I can just move this rope around and I can really focus on getting this curve that I want around here stop again come back in and just like that and just go all the way around and get your general shape that you're going for and like I said because we've got sculpt turned on we can actually stop this at any point and you will notice that it will get a lot smoother on the corners and stuff when you stop drawing as well so if we just carry on with this sculpt now and we continue to draw around this. And the beauty of using the pencil tool is you can be so much quicker than using the pen tool, especially if you've got a graphics tablet, you can draw this really fast. And once again, we'll stop here. We we'll just start to adjust this so we can get into position that we want and we'll just start coming around again. I'm not going to make this perfect. I'm just going to do it as a quick demonstration, but you guys can spend more time on this if you want. Once again, we're going to stop here. If you want to, you can let go again like we did before and just carry on. You can start and stop as many times as you like. And like I said, just increase that rope size if you find it easier to have a bigger rope than this. And just stop, just move that to where you want it. Start pulling again. And we're going to do this all the way around, but I'm going to speed this up just like I did before. So you're not sat here watching me do all this for ages. But you can generally see how quick this is in comparison to using the pen tool. And then once we got to this point, I'm just going to select my node tool just up here, that little white arrow. I'm just going to join this one and that one together to confirm that shape and combine it. And then that's our hand done. So at any point through here, this is a beauty of using vector art rather than pixel. We can always come back and we can adjust any of this if we didn't quite get the shape we wanted to start with by adjusting these handles and really just trying to manipulate this a little bit. 
to get the general shape that you are going for. So what you draw is not final at all. You can always come back in and edit this, but I'm not going to focus too much on this because I want to be quick. So now that hand is finished, we're just going to zoom back out and we can just come off that. And at this point, this is where we can start to use the fill and put all this together to get rid of all this mess that we've got going on. So like I said, layering is really important with this. It's like this one, for instance, this really needs to be on the top as it is because this arm is going to be sat underneath it. So if we just come over and we just focus on our fill, I'm just going to color all this white for now, but you guys are free to color this in any colors you like. If you want to make it brown like a tree, it's perfectly fine. But for me, I'm just going to turn this white. So once I turn that white, you can see that we no longer can see the rest of this arm underneath it. And the same is going to apply over here. So if we tap on this arm here, and we could just start naming these if you want, just so you know where they are later on down the line. And we're just going to put our fill on here as well. So you can see now we can't see that line in the background. Do the same over here to start to put fills on all of this. But this is kind of the step you want to be doing last. So you can see that you've got everything lined up where you want it to be. This one here, I want this sat behind the main body. So we're going to call this the right arm. And then we're going to move this one down underneath the main body just to make it a bit neater. And we'll just come off that. And the reason we can still see this at the moment is because we haven't colored the main body yet. But I'm going to do that in just a moment because I want to color the rest of this first. So I'll just start coloring these legs. You notice on this, if I just come back onto either the pen tool or the no tool, you can see I haven't closed this shape here. And the reason I haven't done that is because I don't want this line visible here. I want it to look as though it's part of the tree itself. So that is the reason I've left that open. So we'll give that a fill as well of white, just like that. And I'm just going to grab that move tool and start selecting the other pieces. So we'll color this one white with the fill too. And we start coloring all of these. And then we can start to arrange it in just a moment once we've got everything colored in that we need. Do the same with the mouth. And also the eye. On both sides of that. We color the main eye first and then we color the inside of the eye in white also. And then we can come up here, we can do this background bit. And this ball here, we can color that one in. This actually, I'm going to keep transparent for now because if we give this a fill, it's going to cover up all this art underneath it and we're not going to be able to see what we need to draw in after that. So before we continue, we just need to select the main body itself and we've got to fill that as well. And now we can just start arranging things like we did before. But you can see straight away, this arm looks a lot better over here now because I actually positioned this earlier on behind the main body where originally it was up here. So you can see it looks a bit messy there. So where you start to layer these becomes important. So we're going to put that down underneath the main body again. And same as this one here, we can start moving things behind where they need to be. So that goes behind the main body. Same as this one over here. And finally, this big shape here, we're going to put that behind the main body as well. And you can see it's all starting to come together how we need it to be. So I haven't named all these layers because I'm trying to be a little bit quicker for all you guys, but you feel free to go in there and name these if it makes it easier for you. So before we just continue with the last bit of this detail, I'm just going to draw the rest of this part in here. I probably won't do the eyes and stuff in here, maybe just the finger section, just for time purpose sake. So I'm just going to zoom in on here so we can focus on it. And this is where we're going to get that pencil tool again. And we're going to make sure we've got sculpt turned on and the stabilizer to make it easier for us. And we'll just start drawing. We'll start off here and we'll just trace around this hand or finger. And like I said a number of times, this doesn't have to be perfect. The picture in the background is just a guide. And we're actually going to turn it off in a minute because we no longer need it. And when we get to this bit round here, it's going to be sat over the ball. So we can just trace generally along that ball down there. And then once again, once we get here, we want to combine these two together. So if we just grab that no tool and we just select that one and we just drop it on top of there like that until it turns yellow. I'm just going to move it out a little bit. And then we can give that a fill as well. So that'll come over the ball itself. 
And then we'll just continue with the rest of these fingers here. These are all going to be individual fingers. So we just have to do one at a time. So we just start off with this one here. Okay, so that's that bit drawn. And as you can see, I'll just overlap this piece here because it's going to sit behind this ball in a minute. So if we just zoom back in again so you can see. So at this point, we can now color this ball in with the fill as well to hide what's behind it. This one here, we give that a fill as well, and then we can just move that behind the ball itself. So it looks a lot cleaner. I'm not going to worry about the face on here at the moment because I want to be a bit quicker. But you can see I've just drew all these out and I've filled them in after. Like I said before, if you grab your note or if you're not happy with it, you can start moving bits around just to make it look better than it did. This is not the final design. You just move that around to look as good as you want it to look. I'm just going to zoom back out. Okay, so finally, we can just come in there and quickly do all our detail work to make it look a little bit better. But before doing that, we may as well go and delete our tree outline that we started off with because we no longer need that. And now we're just going to kind of give it that wooden tree effect. And to do that, I'm just going to center that first of all. And I'm going to look for that main body to start with, which is this one right here. And I want to create a new layer for this. So if we come down here to where it says effects, come over to the right and we've got this new layer button right there. So if we click on that, it's moved up to the top here, but I want to actually nest this inside of the main body. So if we select and drag this down, go to the main body and we're just going to wait to that blue bar indents we're going over to the right just like that and now it's indented inside of that so whatever we draw inside of this now isn't going to come outside of this main body which is going to make things a lot easier when we come to drawing these lines and stuff so to get started we're just going to draw in a few kind of texture effects so we're going to head and grab our pencil tool once again and we're just going to start off drawing some random lines here so maybe start off here and you can see i started up there but you can't see it until we get inside of the main body here so I'm just going to drag that down, give it some random curves. And there's one of our first lines. So at this point, I want to show you what we're going to do with this line rather than keeping them perfectly straight. We're actually going to come down here to the stroke section. And if you guys can't see this on the right hand side, then just go up to your view menu at the top, go down to studio and just make sure that you've got your stroke checked right there. And then you should be able to see this also. So once this is selected, what we want to do is make one end thick and the other end thin. And to do that, we're going to go on this pressure section right there at the bottom and we're going to click in there. If you hold down option on the Mac, I think it might be alt on the PC, but I may be wrong. When you select one of these while holding down option, it will let you freely move one of these around. If you don't hold this down, it's going to move both of them at the same time, just like that. And that's not what you want to do. So we just want to change one side of this and not the other. So hold down Alt or Option. And if you pay attention to the line, you can see what's going on. I'm going to start here because I want it to be big at the top and small at the bottom. I'm going to drag that one down. And we're going to make this stroke a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on here. So I'm going to make that a lot bigger. But you can see up here we've got it going from fat all the way down to being thin at the bottom. And we're just going to use the same effect across all of these. But that stroke is a little bit too big, so we're going to bring that down. I think five is okay. It's not too bad. We can always come back and change this later if we want to. But once we've got that in, we can just start coming in and just drawing all random ones of these and just get as creative as you like with this. And just put random bits anywhere you like just to make it look more like a tree. And the more you put in there, the better it's going to look. And like I said, as long as you make sure you nest it inside of it, it's not going to come out of here no matter where you put it. So we're just going to continue with drawing all these in. Just like that, you can put these anywhere you want. And if you make any mistakes, you can always come in and edit these. So if we grab that node tool, like this piece here, I feel like I could just pull that away from the curve a bit. So I bring that in to make it look a little bit better there. And just remember, we need to indent inside of all of these different shapes. So if we go ahead now and we find this one here, which is that curve there, and we create a new layer again, and then we need to drag that inside of that curve. And this is why it'd be easier to name it as well, so you know where the curve is. And then we can just continue doing the same thing inside here that we did before, just by grabbing that pencil tool and carrying on. And just make sure that you are actually on the layer underneath it before you start to draw. So 
So there you go. You can see how this generally starts to give it character and really good effects. And just how quick that is with using the pencil tool. As soon as you do your first pressure setting that you want here and just keep on drawing, it will remain the same all the time. And if for any reason these are too big for you, you can come back at any point and we can select all of these. And you can actually change the size of them if you want to. So you can make them smaller, you can make them bigger, do whatever you want to do with that. It's completely undestructive and you can just keep coming back and forth and changing things the way you want. So there is my tutorial on when to use the pencil tool and pen tool, as well as a quick introduction of how you would start to create vector art. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did and you enjoyed it, then please hit that like button as it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and helps other people find my content. And of course, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button so you can check out any future videos I've got coming, as well as all the ones I currently have. But for now, have a great day and I will see you in the next video.